Uh, now, one thing I thought we might do today is to uh, get an example of one of these situations in which you get really anxious and try to see if we can understand more about how you think and how you feel when you're in the middle of one of those situations. So can you think of an example of something that's happened recently? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. My daughter has been, um, she's actually been sick and so uh, she had a fever yesterday and um, they started her on an antibiotic and I had to go pick it up from the drugstore and mm -hmm. that's like, I don't usually go there. Um, it's hard to get there. Like, it's not right in the neighborhood. So... Any uh, expressways or bridges to get there? Not expressways, but it's busy. It's busier okay, so and it's like in a mall. So, Any you know, four there's lanes like... Or six lane? Four lanes, yeah. Four lane. So uh -huh. it, it just, it's not someplace I usually would go. And if I was going to go, usually I would either have her go with me or my husband go with me. But right. she was sick and he was at work. And So to try to understand what goes through your mind, let's um, try to take you back. And now you know that the prescription's there and your daughter's sick. And I guess you don't want to ask her to drive over there. I sort of did. Yeah, probably not the wisest idea. So... Uh, you're thinking about doing the drive, and what's going through your mind? What are the thoughts that are churning inside? I'm just, you know, I'm sort of thinking about going there, and I'm already starting to think, well, you know, what, what if, you know, what if, what if I'm what? driving and somebody crashes into me? What if I'm driving and I can't do it you know what if I just have to stop because I can't do it anymore and mm -hmm. you know it was raining and I'm sort of like I've got this picture of myself like out in the middle of the road and you know what's the picture look like you're out in the middle of the road and it's I'm raining stranded and it's dark and my you know oh, it's, yeah. you know my shoes are gone I'm just like it's like I it would be a million miles to get back home. Pretty miserable. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Pretty scary. Oh, terrifying. Yeah. yeah. And um, I, I just, it's so hard okay. to get there. And Kate, as you, as you uh, put yourself back into that situation and have those thoughts going through your mind, what kinds of feelings go along with it? You know, by well, feelings, the, I mean it, 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 things that are inside, like, like fear, physical? anxiety, physical things that are going on. Well, fear and anxiety, and mm -hmm. I just feel really shaky, and I feel really, like, lightheaded and dizzy, and I just don't feel like I can breathe very well, and mm -hmm. I feel like I'm going to, like, fall over. Is this a panic attack now? Uh, you um, told me about having some panic I've attacks. I've had worse ones, but it's mm -hmm. getting there. Not quite to a panic, but, yeah. you know, it's brewing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it feels like it might. Yeah, yeah. Well, what I think we might do to try to, to move things along toward getting a plan of attack on this okay. is to actually sketch this out. Okay. And, um, and, and see if we can figure out some things we might be able to start doing to give you a better handle on it than you have right now. Okay. So let's um, put some boxes here. And one of them is going to be an uh, event. These are the things that trigger your anxiety. And in this case, the event was... Uh, the having to drive to the, yeah. to the pharmacy. Drive to pharmacy. And then this next box I'm going to label something we call automatic thoughts. And by automatic, I mean that they occur relatively automatically. They just sort of pop into your mind, and you don't stop to check them out. Okay. And we all have these kinds of automatic thoughts. Um, you know, I have them. Everybody I know has them. They're inner thoughts. In mm -hmm. fact, if you think about it for a minute, we probably have a lot more thoughts we don't speak out loud that are part of our inner dialogue mm -hmm. than thoughts we actually end up speaking aloud to other people. Mm -hmm. And I suspect that you have lots of those thoughts, and you just gave me some examples of them. Mm -hmm. So that's why we call them automatic. So the, yeah. like the what ifs. Yeah. So let's put a couple of those down in this box. Okay. In the automatic thought box. And they are... What, what if someone runs into me? Yeah. What if, what else? What if I get stranded? 
Get stranded. Uh -huh. um, I can't do it. I can't do it. And then there was this image about the rainstorm and you don't have any shoes on yeah. and so forth. What should we put down for that? I think what if I, what if I can't get back home? I can't get back home. Sort of lost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what if I end up on this road forever? Mm -hmm. And then we're going to put another box. There's a sort of a chain of events here. Uh -huh. The event can make you think in ways that stir up feelings of anxiety and so mm -hmm. forth. So if you're thinking like this, it makes sense that you'd be feeling pretty nervous inside and you might have some of these physical reactions. Mm -hmm. So let's put those in here. This is the emotions box. Mm -hmm. And they are much shaky, you said. Yeah. A lot of fear. Yeah. Uh, if we're going to rate that fear on a 0 to 100 scale and 0 is none at all and 100 is the maximum anyone could ever get, where would you be at this point? Oh, I'd say about an 80. 80, pretty high. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's gone higher, though, I suspect. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. But at this point, it's an 80. Okay. And then uh, you had some other feelings inside? Well, Were I they? yeah, I sort of felt like I might fall over. And, and what else? I, I, my heart was pounding, and I didn't feel like heart I could pounding. breathe very well. How about well. your stomach? Any flip-flops yeah, in your stomach yeah, or anything like yeah. that? Yeah, mm -hmm. So a lot going on here. Yeah. And a pretty high level of distress. Yes. Right. And then we're going to complete this loop by putting a box we're going to call behavior. This is how you actually acted when you're in the situation. So what did you do after you had these thoughts and you had these feelings? I, I went to the pharmacy. You did do it? I had to. Okay. And what was it like for you when you were going to the pharmacy and driving there? It was so bad. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, I, I think I left permanent marks on the steering wheel. Mm -hmm. Because I was okay. holding so on you were to gripping it so tightly. tight. Okay. Yeah. So in this case, you actually did go to the pharmacy, but you maybe did some damage to the steering wheel. As you yeah. Put on. <laughs> yeah. I hope not. But I really yeah. had no choice. I mean, yeah. I think usually I mm -hmm. wouldn't go to the pharmacy. So usually you were I would call my time. I would, would call my husband and say, "Can you pick yeah. it up on your way home?" Get an escape route, if you would. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So usually you would avoid this. So if we looked at this as a model for many of these situations about driving and feeling anxious, yeah. the usual behavior would be to try to get out of it or avoid it. Is oh, that right? yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. And so if you do avoid it, then what happens? Well, I feel better. You feel better? It's like uh -huh. such relief. a relief. Uh -huh. Better, relief. The emotions calm down now, right? Well, yeah, because uh -huh. I don't have to like, mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about it. So that's what happens for a single episode in, uh, of this anxiety. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, though, if we look at the, the impact on you of avoiding and getting relief overall as far as managing driving, what do you think it does there? Well, th I, I feel like I don't really have much confidence when it comes to this, to being uh, able to do it. Okay, so in a way, it, it decreases your confidence over time. I think so. Yeah, I suspect that, that not doing it repeatedly gives you this belief about your capacity to do these driving things. And what's that belief? Yeah, I don't feel like I can do I it. Can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. So it really don't comes back it. to this thought, I can't do it. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you, you can't do it and you don't do it. Right. So here's this, this uh, chain of events. Events trigger thoughts. Mm -hmm. We call them automatic thoughts. And then they influence your emotions, mm -hmm. these feelings you have. And then that influences how you handle the situation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now let's think together for a moment before we wrap up of how we might proceed to try to give you some help with this. So let's take a look at these thoughts for a minute. Do you know anybody else that drives regularly that might think differently than you? Yeah. Okay, what I mean, would be I, an example? I mean, I think almost everybody, I think most people drive without too much okay. problem, but yeah. like my sister loves to drive. Yeah. I mean, she just, she drives every opportunity she gets. Mm -hmm. 
So for some reason, we don't know exactly why, but the key thing here is not looking at why, but to help you with actually making change in this. Mm -hmm. But you do have some differences in the way you think about driving that might be something that we could begin to work on in our sessions. Mm -hmm. We might, for example, check it out. You know, what's the chances of uh, someone slamming into you? Okay. Or what's the chances of you being stranded out there on the highway? And even if you were stranded, is there a way you could cope with that or manage that so you can get back home? So these are some things that we could begin yeah. to do. So I'm going to mark okay. here we could work on these thoughts. Okay. And then by working on the thoughts, we might be able to help you reduce the emotions. But there are also some things that I might be able to teach you that you could use to reduce this level of distress that you have. Oh, that would be really uh, nice. To be able to calm yourself down in situations. So we'll have some, try to build some skills to manage your emotions. And then on this behavior side, uh, one thing that we might begin to work on is helping you gradually begin to take on some of these driving things so that you can build your confidence back up. Mm -hmm. And again, build your skills to do it. Mm -hmm. And I can see that that causes it's, a little bit of yeah. edginess here. What were you thinking when I mentioned that? Um, I, I was thinking that I hope that this doesn't like make me worse, okay. you know, like trying to do some of these things. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you gave me that feedback. That's an example, by the way, of me wanting to hear from you about the way you're responding to what I'm saying. I certainly wouldn't want to do okay. anything to make you worse okay. or to cause you too much anxiety. Uh -huh. And what we'll try to do is, is pace it at just at the level that's right for you Okay. so that you can uh, make some progress and get to the place you want to be, which is to be able to you know, drive to your new office, mm -hmm. cross that big bridge, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe even you know, mm -hmm. drive those couple hours to visit, my to visit son. your son, yeah. right? Yeah. So what do you think? Well, I think that that would, if I could do those things, it would be really nice. Yeah, I think it would be really nice too. So that would be our goal. Yeah.